Uh, perhaps you have some bag bacon? I am a bit hungry. Honestly, bacon. Uh, jelly donuts. We got paper sauce left. I'll be right there. Andre Toilette, you're just in time to help me with my latest experiment. And what would that be, Monsieur Professor? I want to find out if a monkey with a machine gun is smarter than a French Canadian. Ridiculous! No minky is smarter than me. Maybe if there were a lot of minkies with machine guns. This is not, uh... How do you say... good? I am the winner! Hooray for moi! Hey, where is everyone? Does what he likes. The lady's caught in the tractor beam. Andre La Toilette. Bonjour, Andre. Bonjour, Yassel. Andre spent his lonely childhood ruthlessly enslaving small, defenseless furry animals. Move it, man. Drop that nut. Now they are his servants, forced to cater to his every need. In exchange, he uses them as ammunition. Really, not a very good deal for the rodents. Oh, no! But even they cannot make him take a bath. <laughs> it is a lie! I based in the river last summer! Andre, your aircraft is fashioned ingeniously out of a mighty log. Is it true that you can make anything out of a tree? We, oui, with one exception. A brother. I've always wanted a brother. I did make one out of a tree once, but he lacked a certain uh, joie de vivre. And then the termites got him. Bonne chance, André La Toilette. Out of pressure, André La Toilette has won the Freaky Flyers race in our great homeland of Canada. As instructed by André, all rodents will pretend to be proud of him. Animals struggling with this are encouraged to take any of these free acting classes offered on page 7. These lessons will come in handy if Andre can manage another victory in Chicago, site of the next stage in the race. Well, he's done it again! Our master, Andre La Toilette, has triumphed in Arabia. All rodents are ordered to appear interested in his progress. Failure to do so may have severe consequences. If you need further motivation, remember the difficulty the squirrels had last year eating with handcuffs on. And that was only because they missed his birthday. Next, Andre is in Danger Island. We don't know where that is, but believe you me, by the time he comes back, we will. Andre is won again! This time on Danger Island. His orders demand that all rodents send him congratulatory telegrams at his hotel in Germany, where he is awaiting the final stage of the race. Emails are not an acceptable replacement. Andre says they are too impersonal and he doesn't know how to work a computer. On the heels of his victory in the race, Andre has moved to Hollywood and has no plans of coming back. We are free! This is the greatest thing to happen to forest rodents since the Easy Latch picnic basket. Congratulations, one and all! Johnny! <laughs> We can't afford to go back to nature with two twin boys. We are going to have to send the pretty one to live with his aunt in Montana. And pretend we're dead. Huh? <laughs> Johnny, I miss you so much! <laughs> Andre, what's your strategy for winning the race? I will continue to fly magnificently and hit people in the head with rodents from my cannon, the rodent A. And what's all this about Johnny Turbine? You seem to think you've met him before. Yes, I have. And I have proof. 
I have located the birth certificate. The what? You see? Johnny's name. It's been crossed out. I must tell him. We are twin brothers. I cannot believe it. I am so happy. Not so fast, sneaky squirrel. It's back to the barrel with you. There you are! I have the birth certificate! You see? You are my long-lost twin brother! Got no time for your backwards ravings, Frenchie! I've got to find Tracy! But, my brother, where go you? I think he's got what it takes. Just clean him up and he's got Johnny's looks. Oh, uh, well, sort of. I mean, he would. He would definitely be cheaper than Johnny. Hey, fella, you ever had any movie experience? I don't know what this thing you call a movie is. Can you make it out of wood? What is this thin piece of white wood with the squiggles on it? I don't see, uh, what you call it, uh, dialogue? Cut! Astonishing! He could be the biggest star in Hollywood! Sign him up! Here's a multi-million dollar movie contract. Just sign your name on the dotted line. I refuse to sign unless you include my long-lost twin brother, Johnny Turbine. It's a deal. And you must call us the Atomic Twin. In a world where Martians are really, really bad, comes a pair of action heroes destined for greatness. Destroy them all! Mars hates Earth people! They stink! Starring international superstar Andre La Toilette. We did it, Atomic Twin Johnny! We have defeated the Martians and rescued the damsel! Well, I didn't really do anything. You did it all. Again! When will I get to do something? <laughs> oh, yeah! The Atomic Twins go to Mars and rescue a girl, starring Andre La Toilette. Also featuring his brother Johnny, coming soon to a theater near you. <coughs> this film is not yet rated. Am I on? Can you hear me through this dang fergal plug? We're up to our armpits and Cactus Road is good about it. We sure could use some air support. How about it? Any extra body parts? Heads? Legs? Pretty hands with long piano playing fingers? Uh, well, uh, Johnny, probably. I come now! Ach, look at you. You're the most poorly assembled Frankenstein monster I've ever seen. You ought to sue. Like I said to the other guy, I would like to kill you! And then possibly get a free consultation if you don't mind. No, no, not at all. Here's my card. You, you give me a card, Bobby. I won! I won! Behold my Linux! I challenge you, Baron Von Slaughter, to a battle in outer space! I refuse! I'm the winner and I'm going home to Romania! Even without your leg? Cripes! <laughs> Baron Von Slaughter. Crudely stitched together from human body parts, this terrifying monster was made, not born, in a small remote village in Western Romania. Unfortunately for the Baron, he wasn't made very well. Ah, cripes! Now the village hopes Baron Von Slaughter will win the Freaky Flyers competition, become internationally famous, and bring back the tourist industry to his home village. Who are you? I'd like to kill you! <laughs> well, that's just not going to happen, Baron, you cranky monster. Bafta, Baron Von Slaughter! The 
Village Monster is exceeding everyone's expectations. He has won the races in Canada and Mexico, and is now going to race in Chicago. <laughs> the one in the United States. <laughs> Not the Chicago and Czechoslovakia where we all used to go for ice cream. <laughs> We do have a reporter in the U.S. trying to determine if they have ice cream in Chicago there. <laughs> Check back for further updates. The village monster has achieved another triumph from inside a human body. <laughs> the village woman danced the jump up and down, yeah, the traditional Romanian celebration dance. The monster is now off to Danger Island. Should he win there, the village women are scheduled to perform a hip hop version of the dance live on TV Romanian bandstand. The village monster has won the race in Danger Island and Torpedo Run. <laughs> His victory is a great relief and shock to those who had written him off as no more than some sort of a monster, which he is. Next, the very same monster will compete in the final round of the Fiki Flyers competition. <laughs> Germany! <laughs> The village elder suggest that we expect him to lose, so that if he does win, we will all be pleasantly surprised. Congratulations to our village monster on his recent marriage. <laughs> At the wedding, oh, his bride looked beautiful in a dress borrowed from her aunt, Great Ladva. She also wore jewelry and makeup for Mrs. Ladva. Her tiara and parents succeeded also came from Mrs. Ladva. Mrs. Ladva did not attend the wedding as she was at home cleaning up her house for a recent burglary. <laughs> Reported missing was her wedding dress, jewelry, makeup, a tuxedo, and a tiara! <laughs> Hey, you guys have two heads. Give me one. Give me. I need a spare head. Don't be greedy. <laughs> ah, tastes like chicken. Chicken poop. is no good. I take yours. Yours has clever hands. A uh, moment, please. I have a better idea. It's for you. A prosthetic arm. See you later. Uh, thank you. Uh. <laughs> Hey, Baron Von Slaughter! I would like to kill you, Invisible Voice! Now seriously, Baron, what's it like to be an undead monster? Ah, uh, well, not so great. But you get to terrorize people. That must be fun. Sure, sure, it's fun. It's fun until your arm or leg falls off and makes you look like a fool. Say, you don't know any surgeons that specialize putting dead bodies back together? Well, there's Dr. Bentworth, but he's not seeing any new patients. Oh, double cripes! Hello, I would like to make a collect call to Romania, please. Hello, it's me, the Baron! Oh, a dear little monster! How's the freaking flyer race going? Oh, you know, okay and stuff. I'm making you a sweater. That's nice. Um, listen, uh, did the village council approve my, uh, uh, request? They said if you win the race, they might build you a nice lady friend. Oh, really? That's fantastic. You tell everyone I'm gonna do it. Oh, okay, I, I got to go. Love you. Bye. Take care, monster. Oh, such a nice boy. Dance, 
traditional Romanian dance, then jump up and down, ya! Yeah. Oh, okay. I mate, don't be shy, the cookie that means it's fresh! Nice custom dog! A toast to the one year anniversary of the Freaky Flyer Race. And the one year anniversary since I kicked all your butt! Oh, I beg to differ, chap. I knocked you off, ya blooming crumpet! Uh, was that before or after I drilled that flying bookmobile of yours into the ground, dogface? <laughs> bookmobile, good one! Yeah. Oh yeah? Well, let's see you put your money where your big fat mouth is! You are so on the brandy! I deserve it, Tristan! Come on, Pete! You shall be avenged! Out yet. Shut up, good dog! Yeah, I told you the cave was too much. Shut up, good dog! Yeah, maybe a strudel would have been better. That's a little bun cake or Oh, that hideous genetic mutant freak. 
trying to assemble the anti-top secret uber tank cannon to destroy the uber tank of doom dun 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 i love that come along seven 209 we must build a cannon first to ensure the safety of the uber tank of doom oh uh, all right fine i'll do it myself dun 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 Hello, very magnificent German, very Amazon woman warrior. You must fight me, Jacob Dool, the richest man in all of Arabia. If you lose, you will become part of my harem. What if I win? You get to become part of my harem. Isn't that fantastic? Hello, my sweet piece of German chocolate cake. Oh, I'm having no time to talk to you, capitalist pig. All the freaky flares have left. But Professor Gutentag is about to activate his top secret, super powerful Uber Tug. Equilibrium Uber Tugs. Oh, I'm having to rebuild an anti top secret, super powerful Uber Tug cannon as quickly as possible. The pieces are around this battlefield somewhere. Gutendark? How bad could it possibly be? I give you the Uber Tank of Doom! I see your point. Sweetheart, sugar cakes, let me tell you something about that tight top secret, whatchamacallit. Shut up, Swinehound. I do it myself then. Fine, I'll just have to build one first to show you how it's done. I'm sure my beating her at her own game will only make her love me more. Johnny, you are a master of love. Super cool! Come on! Can you hear me through this dang furnace? We're up to our armpits and cack and roll We sure could use some air support. How about it? My bandits are storming a fort? They're supposed to be at my place, piling in the living room! Tiny, what's this world coming to when you can't even trust bandits anymore? They're gonna pay for this? Cactus Rose! El Diablo Chiquita! He's the winner! Viva Muel Alto! Hey, little chihuahua! I know, Doggy Woggy! I'm actually a cleverly disguised intergalactic warrior! Pilot X! And I challenge you to a match in outer space! And if you refuse, I'll make you do so anyway! You're on, ugly. Hey, you said I would go! Cactus Rose, the toughest tamale in Mexico. A real south of the border superstar. You got it right, mister. But after I win this little race, I'm going to be south, north, east, west, all over the place. All over your face if you give me trouble. I won't be giving you any trouble at all, ma'am. She's been a Mexican wrestling champion under the name El Diablo Chiquita. And some even say she's a notorious bandito. Did you just say I was a bandito? Who told you that? He's a lie. I take from the rich and give to the poor. You calling that a crime? Yes, but only because I'm rich. Buena suerte, Cactus Rose. Bandito scientists today announced a major breakthrough in the search for a fashionable and functional bulletproof sombrero. In other news, our fair bandito Cactus Rose is moving on to Chicago for the next race in the Freaky Flyers competition. <laughs> we'll be following both stories over the next few days. The pursuit of the bulletproof sombrero took a step backwards as it failed in a round of tests today. Colleagues say bandito researcher Jose Huertes will be missed. On a happier note, Freaky Flyer Cactus Rose has done it again. 
She's won the race inside a human body and is on to the next race in Danger Island. <laughs>
We sure could use some air support. I will be over. Cool, man, cool. But the only thing I figured out is how to turn the radio on. <laughs> Did that help? A little bit. Hold up the island, Jack. You may have escaped Professor Gutentag's trap, but now you must face my monkeys. <laughs> well, okay, man. I got nothing else to do today. Oh, yeah, I would thank you for fitting me into your busy schedule. <laughs> no problem, man. I was being sarcastic, you nincompoopy. Home sweet home. I thought I'd never get back here where everything is peaceful and. Shark! Oh, I'm not a shark! I'm much more dangerous than that! I'm Pilot X! And I challenge you to a battle in outer space! <laughs> cool, man, cool. Cause I'm scared of sharks. Oh, you mean now? <laughs> cool, man. Island Jack, professional beachcomber, sun worshiper, ambassador of Mellow. Cool, man, cool. Jack was living peacefully on his own beach on Danger Island when he was honored by being selected as a competitor in the Freaky Flyers race. <laughs> Hey, man, this is not cool. The chief sent Jack away on autopilot and into the race. Definitely not cool, man. But all Island Jack wants to do is find his way back home. Take it easy, Island Jack. The good time just keep on rolling. Island Jack has won the Freaky Flyers races in Mexico and Canada. It's almost enough to make a guy want to wake up and clap for him. Almost. Next up, Island Jack is off to race in Chicago. Hometown loiterer Island Jack has made it through the Arabia course of the Freaky Flyers race. He's showing all of us other islanders that his record of sleeping against a tree for five hours straight was no fluke. Next up, Jack's off to Danger Island. Good luck in the race. Ooh, I'm beat from all this talking, man. The good time just keep rolling in like the tide. Our man Island Jack has scored another victory right here on Danger Island. You could have even seen it happen if you had just looked up in the sky. But it's this reporter's opinion that that just involves too much work, so you can take my word for it. Anyway, he won and now he's off to the final round of the competition in Tokyo, Japan. The good times just keep on rolling. Now Commander Island Jack has scored yet another victory. Unfortunately, this time it was against a cruise ship. Until the details come forward, I'm happy to support Jack. Even when the details do come forward, they will be ignored. Details are just way too much work, man. You have entered airspace. You must identify yourself. Oh yeah, no problem, man. It's Island Jack. How do you turn this thing on? Repeat, identify yourself. If you do not identify yourself, we will be forced to shoot you down. Shoot me down? Oh, I'd better get this radio working. Hello, it's me, Island Jack. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry, man.
Island Jack! Oh hey, what's up, man? How's flying that plane going? Cool, man, cool. So, Island Jack, there's a rumor floating about that you're a narcoleptic. Is there any truth to that? Man, just because the brother's laid back, everybody starts to assume that... <sighs> Mr. Jack? Island? Jacko? <sighs> I don't get paid enough for this. And cool man. Wonder what that did. Sven 209, behold our greatest invention ever. The Obertag! No, 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 that music is much too docile. I want something with heart. Give me something with oomph. Give it to me! I love it. Chief of Danger Island, how may I direct your call? Oh, Island Jack! I just wanted to thank you, Chief, for getting me into this crazy race, man. We thought you were just a good for nothing, but you're doing great, Island Jack! <laughs> Cool, man, cool. I also know how to shoot guided missiles now. <laughs> guided missiles. <laughs> you shoot guided missiles. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Island Jack, you've brought great honor to Danger Island. <laughs> yeah, man, you know. We've all discussed it and decided you deserve the most important job on Danger Island. Oh, hey, I don't want a job, man. I just want to get back to my beach. You are now the Commander-in-Chief of the Danger Island Air Force. Hey, man, you can take your job and shut <coughs> Not cool, man. Not cool. Johnny Turbine, raised an orphan on a dude ranch in Montana, Johnny grew up herding cows, standing in front of giant flags, and imagining himself as a true blue American hero. Not blue, more kind of like a fleshy colored American hero. Johnny's famous smack attack was perfected while herding cattle. Move it along now, Bessie. You're not moving. We talked about this with the therapist. Well, you leave me no choice. Unfortunately, the cows learned to smack back. Johnny hopes to be a big Hollywood star. The biggest in the movies. Winning this race will get me a multi-million dollar contract. I doubt it. What did you say, mister? I said I don't doubt it. I just forgot to say the don't part. Good luck, Johnny Turbine. about it. Well, you'll be reading about it soon. There's some fellas here from the newspaper are taking pictures of Nepropod. Pictures? Newspaper? I'll be right there. Tracy, there you are. At last we can be alone. Yeah, yeah, we can be alone. We can be very alone. In outer what? 
Tracy, what are you talking about? I'm not Tracy! I'm not a girl! I'm not even human! I'm Pilot X! And I challenge you to a battle in outer space! A battle in outer space? Wow! That'll make me famous all over the world! You're on, partner! Johnny Turbine, raised an orphan on a dude ranch in Montana, Johnny grew up herding cows, standing in front of giant flags, and imagining himself as a true blue American hero. Not blue! More kind of like a fleshy colored American hero. Johnny's famous smack attack was perfected while herding cattle. Move it along now, Bessie. You're not moving. We talked about this with the therapist. Well, you leave me no choice. Unfortunately, the cows learn to smack back. Johnny hopes to be a big Hollywood star. The biggest in the movies. Winning this race will get me a multi-million dollar contract. I doubt it. What did you say, mister? I said I don't doubt it. I just forgot to say the don't part. Good luck, Johnny Turbine. Our boy Johnny's just lassoed a victory south of the border in Mexico. Planned for siestas and stomach problems. Next up, he'll be going to the big bad city. Say, have you gotten saddle sore lately? Check page five for ointments and elixirs that'll soothe your aching bunch. <laughs> Looks like Johnny's got himself through a heap of mess in the city. Arab country and the innards of some darn human body. Next up, Johnny's off to Danger Island for some fancy flying. On the subject of fancy, Mrs. Berenger is selling her former girdle. Serious inquiries only. That means you, Mr. Wilcox. Well, Johnny made it out of the torpedo run without a scratch. The same can't be said for the toy truck that little Jimmy Weinhardt ate. Both boy and pickup are recovering nicely. Keep following our coverage of Johnny's adventure as he flies overseas to Germany. For more information about Germany, turn to page 9. Sometimes they write articles about Germany. You never know. Well, looks like Johnny's made it in the movies, fellas. This is a bigger break than the time he was caught on camera at Farm Aid. Read the review on page 25. While it may not win any Oscars, our reviewers claim it still makes Mrs. Carson's shadow puppets look pretty weak by comparison. Have a home on the range but missing the deer and the antelope playing? Check out page 6 for the next scheduled deer and antelope basketball game. Vegas odds have the deer favored by three. <laughs> You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Silence, scum! You're a fool. And I hate you. Well, gee, you don't even know me? <laughs> my name's Johnny Turbine. Good for you, Blondie. I've allotted myself 20 seconds to finish miniature. You've taken up 15 of them. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. I was just Silence! Yow! Wow, what a woman! Johnny, how are you holding up so far? Fantastic! I got some interest from the Hollywood people because of my victory so far in the race. They're coming in to meet me, maybe sign me up to a multi-million dollar contract. Really? Don't act so surprised. I told you I'm gonna be a big star, and I met myself a real pretty girl. Hey Johnny, are you aware? that Tracy's supposedly the product of a secret genetic experiment by the German Air Force? A secret who what? A genetic mutant freak! Really? 
I think that's kind of hot! Pilot X's delicious alien technology will allow me to shrink all the freaky flyers and insert them into a human body. You'll never be able to escape and the race will be won only by me. What do you think about that, Sven 209? Oh, I should have called him Schwein 209. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, yeah. Oh, Tracy! Mr. Turbine, we think you have what it takes to make it in the movie business. We'd like to sign you to a multi-million dollar deal. Just need your Johnny Hancock right here. You want me to hand you my what? Have you seen Tracy Torpedoes? She's got my heart, and I've got to find her. My chest is empty. It's empty and it's aching like a milking cow stuck on the barbed wire fence of love. <laughs> Huh? Johnny, there you are! I have the birth certificate! You see, you are my- Got no time for your backwards ravings, Frenchie! I've got to find Tracy! Hey fella, ever had any movie experience? Hey, what are you- who do you think you are? Johnny, I, Andre La Toilette, am your long-lost twin brother! You are? Oh my god, I'll never make it in Hollywood. I look like you! But you have made it! We have made it! We are... The Atomic Twins! The Atomic what? You are Johnny Atomic, and I am Andre Atomic. I've signed us up both for a multi-million dollar contract. You did? And I have the lead role, right? So Johnny, what happens when you get to Hollywood? Have you thought about that? I've already prepared my portfolio. As soon as a producer sees these photos, I'll be rolling in award statues. Mmm, little golden men. Here's me as a baker for all those baker movies I plan to star in. Here I am as a schoolgirl. That was a fun day. <laughs> I didn't even know the camera was on. And here's me as a guy whose photo is not available. Here's one of me in a gorilla suit. No, wait, that's an actual gorilla I met. Quite a guy. Here's me being sad. You know, they say it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile, but <laughs> you know me, I love a workout. <sighs> oh, wait a sec, I have more. Where are they? Oh, here are some that are a little saucier, if you catch my drift. Hope you don't mind a few tushy shots. I'm out. Can you hear me through this dang fernal pun? We're up to our armpits and cactus roses. Good abandoned. We sure could use some air support. How about it? I don't hear any response. Ugh. Fellas, did you say something? Oh, okay, if they're coming to help, then don't make a sound. Terrific, I'll see you soon. They are a-coming, right? Boy, this is frustrating. You have escaped my trap, but now you must face me, Professor Gutentag. Yeah, mimes, how precious. You know, I do a little miming of my own. I call this one, surrounded by flying monkeys and about to die. Oh, I just love the arts. Ow! That really hurt! I'm Pilot X! And I challenge you to a battle in outer space! The Marcel Marceau brothers. They're French, they're Siamese twins, and they're mimes. So with that on the resume, I bet you fellas do all right with the ladies, huh? 
the brothers were abandoned on the streets of Paris as children because even orphanages found them too annoying. But on those streets, they made a fortune, annoying tourists with their constant mimery. The brothers have entered the Freaky Flyers race, hoping to fulfill a lifelong dream. To find their long-lost mother. Mimes away, Marcel Morceau brothers! Welcome to the Old Time Mime Radio Hour, where you get up-to-date news of the mime world. We've got reporter Bobo the Mime standing by at the Freaky Flyers race. Bobo, how are the Marcel Morceau brothers doing in the race so far? Well, Bobo is pretending to be caught in a box. But apparently, the Marcel Morceau brothers are off to the next leg of the race, Chicago. Welcome back to the Old Time Mime Radio Hour. We have an urgent late-breaking news bulletin from a of Bobo the Mime. Bobo is miming that the Professor Gutentag has been foiled in his plans to... To what? To push? To push? To squeeze? To make smaller? To... To shrink, to shrink, huh? all the, the freaky, the fruky, fracky, fruky, fruky flyers, freaky flyers. He was going to die, 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 die divert, divert, huh? is a race into a human booby, a human, bo- a human body. <laughs> Whew. Thanks, Bobo. That was some down good miming, and good job, boys. Welcome back to the Old Time Mime Radio Hour for more of the latest news and information from the world of mime. Our biggest story tonight is the Marcel Morceau brothers' big victory in the Freaky Flyers race Danger Island. Now over to our mime on the scene, Bobo. Bobo is pretending to walk against the wind. Uh, not sure what that means, but the Marcel Morceau brothers are off to the next leg of the race, Germany. Welcome back to the Old Time Mime Radio Hour, and congratulations to the Marcel Marso brothers for winning the Freaky Flyers race and finding their mother. And now to our correspondent, Bobo the Mime. Bobo has nothing to say. Typical. We find the two brothers in Mexico looking for their mother at her last known address, which they have from the only letter she's ever sent them, a bill for their birth. Still searching for their mother, the boys end up in Romania, the world capital for deadbeat mothers and bobblehead dolls. Could it be the boys have found their mother? Or are they really just clinging to a hideous man-eating zombie? (laughs) Yep, it's the zombie. I'm so lonely. So what are you boys going to do if you can't find your mother? And what are you going to do after that? And after that? Okay, once you've got the walking against the wind done, then what? You're going to get surgically separated? Wow! Wait a minute, you only have one pair of legs! What are you going to do about that? in a biscuit? Excuse me, would you mind? Mind your own business! Oi! Are you sure you two want to do this? Once you are separated, you can never be joined again. Nurse, scalpel, and ten cc's of funny gas. These are my twin babies whom I abandoned on the streets of Paris all those years ago. Watch it! Get off of me! Where are you going, Nurse Bootsy? I'm going to abandon them again. I just remembered. I hate mice.
Make Bungaroo! Make hails from down under. Australia. You got that right, mate! Mick's a successful restaurant entrepreneur. Isn't that right, Mick? You got it right again. You're pretty smart. Thank you. I try to read all the restaurant trades. The cuisine at your restaurants is a little unusual. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, it's simple, really. I was driving along one day, and all of a sudden I heard this big thump. Next thing I knew, there was a dead dingo on me windshield. Now me mother taught me to waste not what not. So at my next neighborhood party, me mates and I are jumping down dingo dogs. And they tasted great. That was the beginning of McBungadoo's Roadkill Restaurants. Our motto is, you run them down, we throw them on the barbie. Yes, I saw that on the placemat. The secret's in the sauce. Good day, McBungadoo. got a race to win for me restaurant. We really need help. There's so much good fire down here that the stray shots are even hitting our local wildlife and everything. Wildlife? I think I smell tomorrow's special. I'll be right there. We have some tasty grub here for our victory, Barbie. Fresh too. Just ran it over myself. <laughs> I'm Pilot X! And I challenge you to a battle in outer space! I'm right busy now, mate. Maybe later. Oh, I think you will fight me! I know what your secret sauce is made of! What? But that's impossible! How could you? I know, because I've tasted it before! The secret sauce is... Mick Bungaroo! Mick hails from down under. Australia. You got that right, mate! Mick's a successful restaurant entrepreneur. Isn't that right, Mick? You got it right again! You're pretty smart! Thank you. I try to read all the restaurant trades. The cuisine at your restaurants is a little unusual. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, it's simple, really. I was driving along one day, and all of a sudden I heard this big thump! Next thing I knew, there was a dead dingo on me windshield! Now me mother taught me to waste not what not, so at my next neighborhood party, me mates and I are jumping down dingo dogs, and they tasted great! That was the beginning of McBungadoo's Roadkill Restaurants! Our motto is, you run them down, we throw them on the barbie! Yes, I saw that on the placemat. The secret's in the sauce. Good day, McBungadoo! McBungadoo's Roadkill Barbie King has made it through the first two Freaky Flyers races in Mexico and Canada and is moving on to the next leg of the race in Chicago. In Mick's honor, all Bungadoo's Roadkill restaurants are offering patrons a chance to eat free if they can identify the car that killed their meal. To help in this task, diners are encouraged to study the most popular tire trends. Good luck, Mick, and good luck, hungry patron! Our boy Mick has won his way out of a human body, and now he's off to do it again in Danger Island. Mention this announcement at any Bungadoo's Roadkill Barbie location and get a free koala cocktail appetizer with every meal purchased. Gratuity not included. 
Mick, you kill him, we grill him, Bungadoo is still winning the Freaky Flyers race. Next, he tries to defend his lead in Germany. Speaking of Germany, this month every Bungadoo's roadkill Barbie will be accepting Deutschmarks. Remember, you can't buy any food with them, but if you want to give them to the waiters, they'll be glad to accept them. Mick Bungadoo, local restaurant owner, has added an out of this world taste sensation. Alien Roadkill! It may have tentacles and nine legs, but douse it with Mick's ever popular secret sauce, lay it on the barbie, and you're in for an extraterrestrial eating experience for the whole family. Okay, mates, Mick Bungadoo's talking to you from Mexico. I'm here to show you how the Mick Bungadoo Roadkill Restaurant works. Take your armadillo. It's crispy on the outside, but nice and cow. Son of a... Lesson number one, make sure your roadkill isn't alive. Mick, how's the race going? Glad you asked me that, mate. Because now you don't have to miss out on all that Barbie action. With Bungadoo's Roadkill Barbie Home Kits, now you can have the mouth-watering tasting treat at home. Invite the neighbors to drive over, run over some grub on the way, and grill it up. No, I said how's the race going? Great! We're getting worldwide promotions for free! Mick, aren't you worried about winning the race? Mate, I am winning the race. Our sales are up 300%! You've got to know just when to flip it! To retain all its natural flavors! And then you had McFungadoo's Secret Sauce to have that irresistible flavor! What's in the secret sauce, Mick? Well, actually, its main ingredient is... Hey, I can't tell you that! It's a secret, mate! Hello, Mick Bungadoo talking to you from Danger Island Bay. You know, this sea air makes me mighty hungry. Whoops, I forgot to bring anything to put on the barbie. Not a problem, folks. And what have we here? Mmm, jellyfish. So squishy, you don't even need to marinate. Well, I believe it's all lucky day. It's messy. Let's see if we can get this one. Yeah! Any more of this, and they'll be serving me at my restaurant. Crikey! Kicking alien butt sure does make a man feel young again. Now, what have we got here? Alien technology shouldn't be a problem for a resourceful Aussie like myself. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oi, mate! Don't be shy! The question is made to trash! Myrna Bookbottom, Librarian, Cat Lady, Extremely Polite. Hello! Pleased to meet you, Governor. Now, what is a nice young woman like you doing in this race, Myrna? Well, you see, I have always wanted a life of adventure. But I work in the local library and things just never seem to happen there. Until Margaret Basher came along. Margaret Basher? She is my alter ego. When I get angry, I turn into Margaret. And bad things happen. But you seem so sweet and helpless. And boring. Boringly helpless. Helpless, I. The moral is, you can't judge a book bottom by its cover. <laughs> Godspeed, Myrna Bookbottom. And Margaret Bass. I 
be honored to. I do admire your American Western adventure novel so. And I like to bash bandits! So much excitement! A good spot of tea is just what I need. Aha! Murder book bottle! Just as I planned! You're the winner of the Freaky Flyers competition! The weakest, most timid aviator in the game! You'll have no chance against me! Well, I shall do my very best. At least I will not have to turn into that dreadful Margaret Basher again. Oh, well, actually you will! Because I have no idea how to do anything about that! What? Why, you... you lied to me! I challenge you to a battle in outer space! Hey, I'm the one who does the challenge! No! Is this women's lib? Because if it is, I don't like it! Myrna Bookbottom, librarian, cat lady, extremely polite. Hello, I am very pleased to meet you, Governor. Now what is a nice young woman like you doing in this race, Myrna? Well, you see, I have always wanted a life of adventure. But I work in the local library and things just never seem to happen there. Until Margaret Basher came along. Margaret Basher? She is my alter ego. When I get angry, I turn into Margaret. And bad things happen. But you seem so sweet and helpless. And boring. Boringly helpless. Helpless, I. The moral is, you can't judge a book bottom by its cover. <laughs> Godspeed, Myrna Bookbottom. And Margaret Bass. Librarian cardholders with overdue books. Is it laziness or desperate cry for help? Details inside. Also, an update on flying librarian men at Bookbottom, who is about to begin the next leg of the Freaky Flyers race in Chicago. For more information about Chicago, see North American Reference, comma Chicago in the card catalog. After many high-level talks, it has been agreed that the industry standard shush for a loud library visitor will be 2.5 seconds. Anything longer is frowned upon as it only adds to the noise problem. We also catch up with Myrna Bookbottom, who's fresh off a nose goblin killing spree and is now set for the next stage of the Freaky Flyers race in Danger Island. Emily Stokes Trent, a librarian from Newbury on Tyne, tells the Dewey Decimal Digest that library hours have been extended there in recent years to accommodate slower readers. Also, we check in on Myrna Bookbottom, who is now in the Freaky Fires Finals in Germany. Wedding bells are ringing. The librarian social event of the year, well, really the only librarian social event of the year, okay, ever, was the marriage of Myrna Bookbottom and Margaret Basher to their respective Marcel Marceau brother. Well, when asked what attracted her to her husband, Myrna answered, he's very quiet. Sounds like true love indeed. Upon my return to England, I'm going to report Andre La Toilette to the Humane Society. It is dreadful how he's been treating this poor little ape man. Put on my property immediately, femme d'Angleterre. Well, if you ask politely, perhaps I shall. Well, sucking tree hugger, just try and stop me. Hello, Madame Bookbottom? Yes, who is that? It is I, André Latoilette. Oi, it's a squirrel sucking tree yoga. 
I wanted to apologize for yelling at you earlier. I get sensitive with matters concerning my big food. Oh, that's quite sweet of you, love. Yeah, real sweet. Now bugger off! Excusez-moi. Call me. And on second thought, do you toss up? Ah, English women. They are so complicated. British Empire. Since the beginning of time, man has loved to race. Man's every leap in technology only created further opportunities to compete against each other and test the limits of speed. And then, man took to the air. And now, the sky becomes the arena for the greatest race of them all. A competition that has drawn entrance from all walks of life from several different tax brackets, from every rounded corner of the globe, all gathered for this monumental event in the world of aviation. All of these pilots and many, many more will fill the sky in the Freaky Flyers race. So what are you waiting for? Jump in your plane and get freaky. Pagliacci, legendary crime boss. I'm not a crime boss. I'm just a small businessman. Oh yeah? What kind of business? Crime? Sanitation engineering. I think that means like running the garbage collection on the city. Yeah, right. So why are you in this race, Polly? It's for my mama. She wants me to win the race. She wants her son to be recognized by the world for being the best. What about your business? That sanitation isn't going to just engineer itself. Mama's helping me out. She's ruthless. I mean, she's good at business. Buona sfortuna, Baleocci.
want protection, it's gonna cost ya. Uh, can you send us a mail? It's in the mail. Mama, are you proud of your little boy? I sure am! And so oh, am I! I. I'm Pilot X! And I challenge you to a battle in outer space! And you must fight me! I'm holding your mama hostage! You got mama. You can keep her, you double-crossing jake! What?! You got rid of my only competition for control of the Syndicate! Grazie! No one refuses a challenge from Pilot X! Tractor Beam! Pagliacci, legendary crime boss. I'm not a crime boss. I'm just a small businessman. Oh yeah? What kind of business? Crime? Sanitation engineering. I think that means like running the garbage collection of the city. Yeah, right. So why are you in this race, Polly? It's for my mama. She wants me to win the race. She wants her son to be recognized by the world for being the best. What about your business? That sanitation isn't going to just engineer itself. Mama's helping me out. She's ruthless. I mean, she's good at business. Buona sfortuna, Baleocci. FBI's most wanted sanitation engineer, Pagliacci, has really cleaned up in his first two freaky flyers races in Canada and Coyote Canyon. Next, he's hoping his mama will give him permission to kick some hiney in his hometown. Like any self-respecting sanitation engineer would, uh, Pagliacci took care of a little problem with some white blood cells who were out of line. Next in the Freaky Flyer race, he's got some business in Danger Island. Uh, sanitation engineer related business. I mean, if it wasn't, why else would he be in this magazine? Right? Right. Pagliacci, head of Chicago's largest sanitation engineering family, has done it again! Da! This time in Torpedo Run! Next up, the final round of the Freaky Flyer competition in Germany! Our boy Polly is expected to cement a victory there like mobsters cement boots! Da! The previous statement is only intended as assembly and will not stand up in court as evidence of any boot cementing knowledge! Infamous crime boss, Mama Archie, has been sentenced to prison. Uh, her reign of terror over Chicago has been cut short by the FBI. Shortly after, her son, Polly Archie, was also incarcerated for impersonating an infamous crime boss. A uh, crime deemed more serious than his mother's. Luckily, due to a surprising number of sanitation engineers behind bars, uh, Polly will be able to keep reading this publication in prison. What do you want? Mama, it's Polly. Hey, Pumpkin, I'm kind of busy right now. He don't talk, you know what to do. What you got going on there? Oh, don't trouble yourself. Mama's got everything under control. Now, Polly, are you wearing warm clothes? Are you eating right? Yes, yes, and the race is going well. Well, the east side is giving us some trouble. I'm having a meeting with their boss right now. Okay, now that everyone's warmed up, we can start the meeting now. Hey, Polly, what exactly are you doing? What? 
What do you want? This is business. Seems like you make an awful lot of money for just picking up people's garbage. Just between you and me, I don't know nothing about sanitation. No. You see, I'm the city's biggest crime boss. Freeze! All right, that's the FBI. We got you surrounded. Stay right where you are and don't even think about using that secret unguarded trap door underneath your desk. Gangsters. They just never cooperate. But he's been my barber for 20 years. I didn't like that last haircut he gave you. That's it, Mr. Pickles. We ain't never having prosciutto before bed again. We're back, Mama. Now that I won the Freaky Flyers race, I can get back to running the crime scene. Uh, I mean, the sanitation engineering scene. Freeze! Not so fast. Your sanitation engineering days are over. Now put this crime boss under arrest, boys. You guys are good. Mama Achi, you're under arrest. What? No, I am. This whole sanitation engineering thing? It's just a cover. I am the notorious crime leader of the city. Yeah, right. Take her away, boys. No, it's true. I'm a vicious gangster. Everybody knows that. My barber, well, he's dead. But my friends know it. My landscaper knows it. So does my kindergarten teacher before I had a whack. Oh, come on. No, absolutely not. We have no time for... Centron, and you soft-hearted idiot! Hey, look at me as I am. Hello, guten tag. Wait, is that a bald spot? No, no, it's not good. It's just probably just a lighting. I think I'm aging better, don't you, Sven? I mean, look at my buns, they're so good and oh, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. No, Sven, don't touch that thing! That's not a toy! Pilot X, thank you for your assistance. I've won the Freaky Flyers race and proven myself the greatest aviator ever. Wait a minute! There! Now I will prove myself the greatest aviator ever! You will fight me in outer space! What? You told me you would help me win the race if I gave you the Sven 209! Well, I lied! Who'd want that dumbbell robot? I want to win! Oh, no, is this gonna take a long time? Come on, what, what a pain is this? We must then we have to make sure that we get Professor Gutentag, one of the most brilliant inventors of the century. Thank you. It is, of course, very true. And head of Switzerland's Gutentag Industries, the largest producers of cuckoo clocks in the world. Yes, very humble beginnings. W would you like one? No, if I need to be annoyed every hour, I'll get married again. Now, I understand you'll be flying your custom-made robot in the race. Yes, that is correct. Sven 209, say hello. Rumor here in the narrator game is that you've made contact with an alien named Pilot X, and that you're conspiring with him to win the race. What? a oh, ridiculous accusation. You must be insane. I'll, I'll stand for no more of this abuse. Come along, Sven 209. 
Oh, don't forget your juice. Good luck, Professor Gutentag. Attention, incoming data. Spen209 has won freaky flyer races in Mexico and Canada. Spen209 is an inspiration to both robots and automated machines everywhere. Spen209 will next be racing in the city, accompanied by his human, Professor Gutentag. We encourage all city-based robots to come out and show their support. We would wish him luck if we did not know that luck really is a combination of probabilities and linear regression in transmission. Attention, incoming data. Spen209 has triumphed in the human body. Even this artificially intelligent publication can recognize the irony in that. Ha ha, hee in laugh sequence now. Laugh sequence terminating. Despite it all being his fault, Sven's receiver is being flooded with congratulatory transmissions from robots around the world, including one from President Robot in transmission. Attention, incoming data. Sven209 has emerged victorious from Torpedo Run. The next and final round of the Freaky Flyers competition is in Germany. Several travel operators who cater to robots are arranging for packages including air travel and power supplies with appropriate adapters. If you are interested, download file now in transmission. Attention incoming data. Sven209 is now the owner of Professor Gutentag's Cuckoo Clock Empire. Having activated his philanthropy chip, Sven is shown here opening his latest charitable foundation, the home for the care and repair of abused robots. He is a fine role model for all next generation robots in transmission. Sven Mitchell 209, you are a dumbbell in a can. What do you mean you can't find your keys? They're ahead in the race! How incompetent can you be? What kind of robot intelligence loses his keys? Oh, yes, exactly. Maybe they're in your rear. A canister propulsion unit. Oh, come here! Uh, what is all this stuff? Cheese in a can? Robot girl magazine? Hair extensions? Oh, you might have dropped them into your iron propulsion stabilizer. Oh, <laughs> yeah, here's, here's, here's they are. Same in my pocket. <laughs> oh, well, don't just lie around in the pile. Pull yourself together. We got to get going. Oh, so hard to find good help these days. Yeah, yeah, I definitely should have got an evil assistant monkey or something. Good Ah, Pilot X. You received the message I sent you via the high-frequency oscillator beacon. Yes, but it was too loud! Next time, turn the volume down a bit, okay? Yeah, fine, okay, volume. Yeah, look, look into it, okay? Yeah, when can we meet? You've promised me some alien technology that will help me with the Freaky Flyers race! I'll meet you in Switzerland and your laboratory! Oh, I hate how it never says goodbye. Don't you, Sven? He's such a poopy head. I heard that! Well, Sven209, looks like our visitor isn't going to show. Show what? <laughs> Perhaps you mean show this? Use this device on the other racers! Oh, what does it do? It's great! It'll shrink them down to the size of dust mites! Then you can... you can stick them inside a human body! Whatever! On my planet, we use this thing to get rid of our trash! Wow, this will definitely do the trick. What do you want in return? Oh, where did he... Goodbye, Guten Tag. Is that so hard? I mean, come on. Yeah, you don't have to hug nothing. Just goodbye. Just, you know, see you later. So, Guten Tag, it looks like all the Freaky Flyers escaped your devious plot. No, no, I wouldn't really say that. Mr. Glass is half empty. Well, they did. I thought you were supposed to be a brilliant, devious genius. But I am. I have tumble days like everybody else, so yeah. If you ask me... But no one is asking you anything. I think Pilot X was trying to set you up. I think he really wants to win the Freaky Flyers race and was trying to use you to get rid of the other Flyers. Oh, really? Oh, well, yes, of course. I knew that. Say, what else do you know, Mr. Smarty Voicey Guy? Well, Sven209 hates you. Yeah, we 
kicked his butt. We kicked his butt. We kicked him in the butt. Yeah, the butt, butt, butt. In the butt, in the butt. Oh, shut up, poopy. Oh, but don't just stand there, you idiot robot. Help! Okay, monkey, simmer down. Now, I'd like to review some of your work over the last few days. Oh, I love this little intro film. Hey, Mr. Monkey Pants, you stop your daydreaming. Yes, I'm talking to you, monkey number three. Oh, oh forget this. I'd, I'd like to see the following monkeys in my office. And please bring your playbooks and have your bags packed. Monkey number three. Monkeys six through twenty. Okay, quiet, quiet down, please. I'm trying to fire some of your colleagues. What? What's happening? You can't quit! No one leaves food and health industries! Alright, fine then! You all pay for your incompetence! Sven, ignite your feet! Well, let me put you on the hold for a second. Okay. You want to play hero? Go ahead. Woohoo! It's about time you got here, you big idiot. How dare you keep us waiting? As usual, you disgust me, Abdul. It is my beloved camel, Humpy! Oh, you crazy, Humpy! Hey, what's wrong, Humpy? I know, Humpy! Behold, Pilot X! And now you must travel me in outer space! Let's get it on, spaceman! Bye bye, Haram! I don't blame you one bit, buddy! Sheikh Abdul, billionaire oil magnate from Arabia! Actually, zillionaire! Depending on today's price of oil. As a toddler, the world's oil prices jumped with each of the Sheikh's frequent tantrums, usually hitting a peak just before nap time. Today's gas prices, no! No, 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 no! As he said, I want him some milk. But few know the truth about Sheikh Abdul's global empire. His and Harem Incorporated. It's completely controlled by... His Harem. That is not true! It is a lie! You are a impudent three-legged dog! Stop telling lies! No, no, no! I will have your head on a plate before this race is over! Sheikh Abdul had some important business to attend to. Please continue. Good luck, Sheikh Abdul. So Abdul won the Freaky Flyers races in Canada in Mexico. Big deal. With invaluable assistance of his harem, even a camel could have won. Even our dumbest camel. And now next stage of the race is Chicago. I swear, we would send this camel if shipping went to Chicago wasn't so expensive. And now Abdul has triumphed in Arabia. Yes, and if it weren't for our help, that moron would still be looking for his carpet keys. Next up, he goes to Danger Island. Which means we go to Danger Island. Which means another night in some horrible hotel without a swama on the room service menu. That's the real story. But you don't see that on the front page, do you? Thanks to us, the Sheikh Haram, he has been victorious in the race on Danger Island. Now he faces the final round in Germany. So we will help him again if he wins. We will never let him forget it. 
We will peck him like a thousand hens. If he thinks we are joking, he is mistaken. We don't tell jokes. Being in a harem is a serious business. There is no time for joking. A Haram examiner reader from Abu Dhabi asked, What there happened to Sheikh Abdul? Well, the former Sheikh has found a new place of employment since being downsized from Haram Incorporated. He started a new business with his new business partner, Humpy's Chicken Hut. Folks say it's Humpy licking good. I won, I won. You won, big deal. Look at all these bullet holes. Yes, but... And who has to shampoo the carpet? This is why we can't ever ever have nice things. You changed all my presets on the radio. You came with it big. I'm sorry. Imputing three-legged dog. What was that a do? Some back talk? Oh, no, 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 sweetnesses. Praises be for your generous help. How lucky I am to have such a wonderful harem. Imputing three-legged dog. Holy hummus! That's the kind of woman I would like to be handpecked by. I must have her for my harem. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Silence, scum! You're a fool. And I hate you. Well, gee, you don't even know me? <laughs> my name's Johnny Turbine. I am going to make that pestilent American donkey pay. I shall first hide in this barrel and wait for the moment to unleash my furious fury. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. I was just saying... Oh, she's so tough. I think I love her. I clearly have issues with women. It smells like highly flammable oil. I guess I'll just ignite my trusty lighter and see if I'm correct. Come on! Ah, much better. Oh no! This oil gazillionaire shake does not appreciate irony. Part. Watch it, you dodo! Oh, you're stepping I, on me! Ouch! I, I have, have the thirst of a thousand post and stamp! Shake coming through! Sorry! Whoa! Oh, okay, 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 Daisy! Excuse me? Stepping on me! Ouch! I oh, curse boy. you! I am so lucky to have you, Humpy! Shake Abdul! You are one of the world's richest men. Yes. Yes, it is very true. What's it like? Is it lonely at the top? Oh, no. You see, I have my harem. They are very good at providing for my every need. They're very fortunate to have a good and wise sheikh like myself in charge. Oh, excuse me a minute. Official business. We told you. No interviews. You're too stupid to talk to anyone. Now, sweetness. Shut your trap, Shake, or you'll pay the consequences. Stop bothering me. I am too busy and important for you. Uh huh. I am the greatest Shake in the world, the winner of the Freaky Flyers Global Race. Behold my glory. Oh, my sweetnesses! Your kind and loving check is locked out of his building. Not locked out, thrown out. We are tired of being a harem. Insolent jackals! This is the Sheikh's company. It is his and Haram Incorporated. What about a his? You have been downsized. We no longer have need of your services. Your severance is the camel. The ugly one. Why, you three-legged, imputed dog? Ouch! 
Gigi. We get jumping in the ring. Apologies, I cannot possibly divert from my schedule. Can you speak up? I can barely hear you over all the girls crying over their lost boyfriend. Uh, singer girls? Singer uh, non battery operated girls? Uh, I'll be right there after a quick frost on my teeth. Hello, ladies. Well, there's a Sammy Wasabi. Japanese Genius Magazine's Genius of the Year. Ah, Professor Gutintag. Honored to meet the Swiss Genius Magazine's most celebrated cover boy. Mm, how deliciously brilliant of you, Sammy, to escape my trap. Was that yours? Gutintag-sama, it was a brilliant trap. Yes, well, Tom, tell me something I don't know, Mr. Schmally Pants. But it is a pity, really, that you will now be undone by monkeys. Monkeys? Why does it always happen to be a monkeys? Hello, Sammy. You cute little thing. I have won the Freaky Friars race! Time for a big party! Now give daddy some sugar. Ah! Arian Kutis! I was going to let you go free, you pervert! But now you must face me in a battle in outer space! Don't you people have no watch on this planet! Sammy Wasabi, Japan's top secret weapon and genius aeronautic engineer. Uh, excuse me, down here. Hi, nice to meet you. Named Genius of the Year three times in a row by Japanese Genius Magazine. Sammy has been building fighter attack planes since he was two years old. He once built a robot so powerful, it had to be sent to the moon. He was a good robot. Now Sammy Wasabi builds planes so complicated, he's the only one who can fly them. His masterpiece, the Kamikaze Express. Todoroku, Sami Wasabi! Japanese genius Sami Wasabi has triumphed over the rest intelligent races in Canada and Mexico. All Japanese geniuses are following Sami's progress closely and with much interest. Sami now proceeds to the next race, Chicago. Japanese a genius Sami Wasabi has a demonstrated his brilliance once again in Arabia. Japanese Genius Magazine has learned from a Swiss genius magazine that Professor Guten Tag had a devious plan up his sleeve to shrink all of the Freaky Fire's races and divert the route of the race into a single human body. We salute his genius. Good job, Gutentag-san. Next up, Sammy returns right here in the Danger Island. Welcome home, Sammy-san. You bring us some much honor. Local genius Sammy Wasabi 
has dominated in a torpedo run. He has proven himself a credit to all the Japanese geniuses. We excitedly await his homecoming as he enters the final round of the Freaky Friars competition in Germany. Sammy Wasabi has returned to Japan after winning the Freaky Friars race. The genius aviator plans to take a well-deserved vacation and recover from the stress of the race, which has left his otherwise genius mind momentarily confused to believe he is a headless fish. While he is in this state of confusion, he will still carry the honorary title of genius but will not be able to practice the genius arts until his sanity returns. I'm going to kick your keister, Mick! Ha! You're dreaming, Mike! <laughs> Think it's so much fun! Yoshi, Poliachi, infamous Chicago cream bus, and the perfect test subject for my virtual reality helmet. Hi, Poliachi, reach for the sky. Virtual reality helmet is so much fun! Sammy, tell us about your plane! The Kamikaze Express is the world's most technologically advancing flying machine. But it doesn't just fly, does it, Sammy? Oh, yes! Kamikaze Express is a multi functioner. Observe. Now, it is the world's most complicated home entertainment system. Can you even copy this? Now, it is a sushi bar with the world's finest robotic sushi chef! I love you, Sammy. You're What's this, Sammy? Yeah. Is this your yeah. girlfriend? I love you, Sammy. Oh, this, so this is just a joke. And sexy. Mm. And seems to be stuck. You're my master, my creator. I love interview. you. Hugo, you the interview is over now. My Read my rip, a normal interview. I love you, Sammy. Tracy Torpedoes, very attractive already, <laughs> and very attractive next victim of a virtual reality helmet! Oh! What? What is this? What is big idea? Hey Tracy baby, would you like to see the inside of the Kamikaze Express? Ah! Oh. Not to self. Virtual reality helmet is not always so much fun. <laughs> Sammy Wasabi is the greatest freaky fryer in the world! <gasps> ah, have you come to congratulate me? <laughs> you little son of a boy! <laughs> Take <laughs> Oh wait, I, I'm not a sushi fish! Oh, no! <laughs> Tracy Torpedoes! Trained from an early age to be an elite pilot by the German Air Force, Tracy lives for aerial combat. She takes pride in having shot down 1,000 aircraft. 1,012's fine. 1,012 aircraft. With a man in a jetpack. He looked very suspicious. No one knows where she came from, though rumor has it. That's not true! I am normal person, not genetic mutant freak product of some strange experiment by German Air Force. Uh, okay, Tracy. I wasn't going to say that you're a genetic mutant freak. You weren't? Okay, I was. But let's talk about the race. My mission is to win Freaky Flyer's race for pride of German Air Force. And I will let no one and nothing stop me. I'll look, Tracy. I'd 
lots of people for me to shoot at and daring aerial maneuvers to perform? Well, yeah! I come now! Ah, so you've escaped my brilliant trap. But you won't make a monkey out of me, Tracy Torpedoes. I'll take a shot at the damn Guten Tag. Well then, I'll make a monkey take a shot at you. Oh, yeah, I just love the fab punt! Hello, my little strudel of love! Look, Johnny, I'm sorry I was so rude earlier, but I'm just not interested in you. Oh, really? Perhaps you'll be interested in this! I'm Pilot X! And I challenge you to a battle in outer space! Whew. You had me scared for a minute. I didn't realize you were just an evil ace pilot from outer space. I thought you were Johnny Turbine. Let us commence with whooping of buttocks. Nice firm grip! Danke, I work out. It shows! Tracy Torpedoes. Trained from an early age to be an elite pilot by the German Air Force, Tracy lives for aerial combat. She takes pride in having shot down 1,000 aircraft. 1,012's fine. 1,012 aircraft. With the man in a jetpack. He looked very suspicious. No one knows where she came from, though rumor has it. That's not true! I am normal person, not genetic mutant freak product of some strange experiment by German Air Force. Uh, okay, Tracy. I wasn't going to say that you're a genetic mutant freak. You weren't? Okay, I was. But let's talk about the race. My mission is to win Freaky Flyers race for pride of German Air Force. And I will let no one and nothing stop me. I'll look, Tracy. Fräulein Tracy Torpedoes has scored triumph after triumph in the Freaky Flyers competition. Once again, demonstrating the unbeatable uber power of the mighty German Air Force, which shall crush all the known world with its glorious iron fist! Next in her path is Chicago. In a related story, the German government has noticed that Fräulein Torpedoes is not taking the most efficient route. As punishment for her wastefulness, the statue of her that was being constructed has been destroyed! Fräulein Tracy Torpedoes has shown the world that even being shrunken into a human body cannot stop the fearsome German Air Force! Next, she will further humiliate all the other freaky flyers in the sneaky lands of Danger Island. In our coverage, no pictures will be shown for fear that it may lead the readers to believe that one day they may actually be allowed to leave Germany to visit there. Fräulein Tracy Torpedoes has prevailed again, this time in Torpedo Run, further cementing the reputation of the German Air Force as competent and deadly! Now Tracy will continue on to the final round of the Freaky Flyers race in her picturesque war-torn fatherland. Look for complete coverage of her victory on the front page of our next edition. If she does not win, the details will be concisely reported in a paragraph on page 56. Fräulein Tracy Torpedoes has been happily reunited with her 100 identical sisters. Together they have started Torpedoes Bay Airlines. Tracy is the pilot, but since they are all identical, you the passenger will have no idea who really is flying the plane until you see if you land safely or crash horribly. In the event of a crash, you will be able to die with the knowledge that it was not Tracy flying the plane. That is what the German government has determined to be a win-win situation. So you see, Germany wins again. Twice! Congratulations to us all. Hello, my sweet piece of German chocolate cake. My name's Johnny Turbine. Good for you, Blondie. I've allotted myself 20 seconds to finish Mainischer. 
You've taken up 15 of them. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. I was just saying- Silence! Yo! Wow! What a woman! German chocolate cake. That isn't even funny. That's insulting and fattening. <laughs> Tracy Torpedoes, your elite training with the German Air Force seems to be paying off. But what's the girl like beneath the snarling surface? I'm too busy to be doing chitting and chatting with you. I mean, do you like to go to the beach? Long walks in the rain? Spend some quiet time with voiceover guys? My mission is to humiliate all freaky flyers by proving the aeronautical might of German Air Force. No one will get in my way! Victory for the Fatherland! Tracy, it's your Johnny Kims. Shouldn't have <coughs> brought roses. Tracy, you must be wondering why I've called you here. Well, it's time for you to know the truth. Your parents were not your parents. Mutter and father were both scientists. They created you. Oh no, it's true. I am genetic mutant freak. Yes, you were part of a genetic experiment by the German Air Force called Operation Female Bombshell. But you were not the only one. You have 100 identical sisters. They all work in the entertainment industry. Yeah, I'm telling you this so you throw the race for Germany and help me win it. No, I'm not going to win it for you. I'm not going to win it for German Air Force. I'm going to win for me and my 100 sisters. Oh, so poopy. That didn't work out the way I planned. Hey, Tracy, it's me, Johnny. Remember me? I've just signed a contract to be a movie star. I brought some of your favorite candy. I read about it in Air Force Fraulein magazine. And look, I bought you a little puppy. His name is Pepe. It's actually not a real puppy, but a very lifelike stuffed animal. Well, I don't have anything else for you. Just me. Can I see you again sometime? Victory for genetic mutant freaks! She become part of my harem. I will make you chairwoman of my global conglomerate. He's in harem incorporated. And you could have Saturdays off. And you could shoot anyone you like. I have nothing to offer Tracy, but a life of glamour and fame as the girlfriend of the biggest star in Hollywood. Look guys, this has to stop. I'm getting out of female bombshell business. But we can't live without you! Did you know I have 100 identical sisters? Woohoo, baby! Oh, I get 99 bombshells for my head up! As long as you leave me one! 